Okay. In our third part of this uh, series of tutorials relating to converting from Word documents to Acrobat, we are going to look at using the built-in uh, liaison between Acrobat and Word. And in fact, you'll find this across the Office Suite, across Office 2007. So if I click the Acrobat tab, we can see that we've got a range of tools here. A little bit more than you get with just the standard going up to the Office button or the File tab and choosing uh, to convert or save as PDF. So what we want to do here, are a few things. I'm going to first click the Preferences tab. Now when I click the Preferences tab, I have a range of options here uh, in the little drop down. Mine defaults to smallest file size because that's what I routinely use. But what we have is a range of possibilities here. So smallest file size is what I'd recommend. Again, if you're emailing, putting it up on a corporate internet or intranet where you're going to have remote users or people using it that may not have the best internet connections uh, available to them. So it is a compromise. We're compromising our image quality a little bit. It'll look okay on the screen and it'll print okay, but we're not talking poster quality or brochure quality when it prints out, uh, but it's acceptable. Uh, the next level up is standard. Now with standard you might be less pressured by the file size where perhaps you might be uh, saving these onto a CD or a DVD for distribution that way. Uh, now you'll notice this smallest file size V8, that's actually I've made a custom version of the smallest file size where I've set the compatibility for version 8 of Acrobat Reader. Uh, you can uh, explore these settings and make your own customised versions, we'll make that the subject of another tutorial. Uh, now. Up the top here, we've got high quality print. That's if you're perhaps going to be putting it on your corporate intranet and people will have access to a good quality color printer to print your document off, perhaps a high res printer. Press quality is if we're sending it to a commercial print shop. At this level, we're starting to embed fonts. We're getting uh, high resolution images. Uh, so it's going to be a substantially bigger file size, but you don't have to worry about Acrobat Reader substituting in fonts because the end user doesn't have them. This level we're going to be embedding fonts with press quality. Now you'll notice a whole range of other options in here. Uh, these are speciality options. Those of you familiar with printing might recognize CMYK for cyan, magenta, yellow and black, or RGB for red, green, blue. If you're dealing with a commercial printer, I would ask them, look, we've got all these settings available. What suits your equipment best? They uh, may recommend one of these to you, or they might say, look, we'll send you our, our job options file, which has our settings that suit our equipment. Uh, and they can send that custom file to you. It's very much like I, what I did here with smallest file size for version 8. It's their collection of customized settings that might suit them. So we're going to go with smallest file size so that we uh, really optimize the reduction of the file size because we've got a, perhaps a lot of rural or remote users uh, and as people in Australia would know you don't have to be too remote you just have to be on the far side of the great dividing range which is not that far from most capital cities to have really appalling internet connection speeds uh, but anyway again I'm getting a bit political so what we might do uh, is let's click the word tab uh, where it's got some options here for Word. Uh, I'm not going to change too much of this, but again, if you were getting uh, displayed comments, if you had a document where you had been doing track changes, perhaps you could switch that on. Footnotes and endnotes, we want those converted. What's really important here, if I go to the Bookmarks tab, I want Word headings converted to bookmarks. As you would have seen in section one of this little tutorial, we used our heading one, two, and three through Control Alt one, Control Alt two, Control Alt three, and we inserted a table of contents based on those headings. So it would be good if the conversion process can pick that up. 
I'm not setting the security at this stage. It's actually usually much more convenient to set your security actually in uh, Acrobat itself once it's been converted. So that's just setting the settings. Step two is we actually want to create a PDF. And I'm just going to tweak the file name here a little bit, uh, basically because I've already got a version of this we did in a previous exercise. Now, when I click Save, we're going to view the result here. It will open it in Acrobat itself. Uh, Acrobat Standard or Acrobat Professional is what we need here. Uh, in fact, it's by virtue of having Acrobat Standard and Acrobat Professional that we have actually got the Acrobat tab in Word. And it's converted. Now, uh, I'm running a multi-core processor here, uh, or the machine thinks it is. This is actually a virtual machine running a multi-core processor, so it converted fairly quickly. It's also not that big a document. Now, uh, a few things I want to do here now that I'm in Acrobat itself. First thing I want to do is I'm going to go to the File menu and I'm going to choose Properties. Now, I'm going to start in the Description tab. Now, unlike Acrobat Reader, in Acrobat Professional and Acrobat Standard, this information is editable. So I can edit this information to, to suit, uh, but uh, I'll leave it as it is for the moment. If I go now to the Initial View tab, I can set how I want things to appear when I open the document up. So when somebody opens the document, I would like the bookmarks panel and the page to be visible. I would also like the width to be set to fit width so that it will occupy the available space so the document is a little bit easier to read. I might also say, look, when this document opens, I want it to open onto page two, which is my table of contents. Now, if I go OK at this point, just to confirm that. Now, I'm going to save the document so that those serving settings are preserved. I'm going to close it. So we've set our properties. We've closed the document. Now, I've opened an Acrobat reader here so that we can see what the end user would see. So if I go to the file menu here, and here's my document. Now when it opens up, you'll notice how it's opened up with the bookmarks panel appearing on the left. It's opened at page two on the right, so I can see my table of contents. So I can click on a topic in the table of contents and it will take me there. And also I can click at various points in the bookmarks and it will navigate me through the document. Also, if I go File, Properties, we see, although they're not editable, we can at least see our document properties. Uh, so that's the process of uh, converting from a Word document to a PDF. We've seen in this series, we've seen how to prepare your document we used our heading styles, we added a table of contents, uh, we've then converted using Office 07's built-in uh, Save as PDF approach, and we've also converted using Acrobat Standard or Professional. We've seen we get a few more options if we've got the full product, but you can certainly do a very serviceable job uh, with just the basic conversion options. Now, if you've got any questions, uh, you can send me a text at Stephen, that's Stephen with a V, Stephen.night.training, or you could email me at Stephen uh, at Stephen at trainerscope.com, train a scope, uh, with or without the dashes, it'll work either way. That first address I gave you there before, Stephen.night.training, is of course a Skype address. Uh, what you'll also find if you go to www.trainascope.com is my blog. Uh, also on my blog, you'll find the link to my YouTube channel and uh, my Twitter feed as well, where I announce that I've done extra bits and pieces like this. Thank you for your attention.